How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to cover credit card churning and how you can get $1,250 on a $4,000 spending. I know there are some people out there not very much into this credit card scene. They don't like churning. They don't like to get very many credit cards at all because sometimes it can plunge you into debt if you are not careful with it. The way you should be using these credit cards is to get it have the money in the bank to pay it off, the $4,000, whatever you need to buy with it. And then with that, you get your $1,250 worth of points or cash back. The credit card in question today is Chase Sapphire Preferred. Now, I normally don't recommend any of these annual fee cards, but in this case, it's actually a really, really good deal. Spend $4,000 within three months, and then you're gonna get 100,000 points worth about $1,250 on travel, but there is a way for you to extract this money out and sort of turn it into cash and then you can use it for whatever which way that you want. There is a $95 annual fee, so what I personally did, I already have this card, is I get it and then I mark on my calendar exactly one year away from when I actually signed up for it and then I cancel it right before the one year is up so that I don't pay yet another $95 worth of annual fees. Keep in mind that if you do cancel it, you need to spend all the points that's in your account. During this pandemic, they have all these really great offers with ways you can spend these points. There's this thing called pay yourself back using ultimate rewards points and they're going to give you another 25% bonus on top of this. So the category that you can spend is dining, grocery stores, home improvement stores, and select charities. All these categories is normally not there. If you have Chase ultimate rewards points with a different credit card, you may not get this 25% bonus. So it needs to be this Sapphire preferred card to get this. Now, how do you exactly transform your points into cash? Well, not exactly cash, but you can actually transform it into Visa gift cards because there is a grocery store category. A light bulb went off in my head and I'm like, hey, if it's a grocery store, why don't I get a Visa gift card over there? Of course, you have to pay $5.95 fee for a $500 gift card. So it's just a, just a small amount of fee, but this Visa gift card essentially allows you to spend on any category that you want. Of course, if you have places where you can spend on dining or groceries, go ahead, spend that first because then you don't have to pay a fee. But for me, using a Visa gift card is actually very versatile. You can use it on any of the online shopping stores. You can go back and use it for groceries if you really want. You can use it for restaurants. Although with a Visa gift card, you probably don't want to hand the gift card to anybody because they might be able to take down your credit card number and the back three digit number as well. So whenever you use your gift card, try to just only swipe it uh, by hand yourself and don't give it to a server or anything. I've also noticed for Visa gift card, if you want the most portability, get one that is issued by Made Up Bank. They have all these different Visa gift cards that is issued by various different companies. And I've noticed that sometimes um, not all online utilities will accept these cards. So check it out here. I've already spent a little bit at the grocery store and you get 25% more point value. So essentially, if it's 1,000 points that you have to pay on $10, you only need to pay 750 points. If you guys are interested in this credit card, check out my referral link down in the video description below and you can directly help out this channel if you want. Keep in mind that for this Chase credit card, in order to get it, you have to have fairly good credit score and it is a Chase credit card, so the 524 rule applies. You have to get less than five credit cards within the past 24 months. If you got five or more, then they're automatically not going to approve you for this credit card. So make sure you stay under this threshold. You can go to various credit cards and check your credit score and how many credit cards you applied to in the past 24 months. Do this before you actually apply. So if you break down the numbers, 100,000 points, it means you can get something at the grocery store for $1,333 and then you have to apply 100,000 points to that and so the value you essentially get is 1333 subtract the annual fee 95 dollars subtract maybe three 
$6 things because you have to pay the transaction fee for each Visa gift card and each Visa gift card can only go up to $500. You're looking at something like 30% discount on everything that you buy. Now, the way to play this is you have $4,000 to spend. This is a lot of money. For myself, my entire burn rate, it's not this much every single month, but it might reach close to $1,000. So you just use this credit card for everything under the sun, like your utilities, your groceries, you go out for whatever, you know, and anytime they would allow you to use a credit card, use it, keep on filling it up, make sure that you reach that $4,000 threshold. And if you wanna get this 25% bonus, on groceries, make sure you do all this before September 30th because that's when it expires and then you can, you know, this little trick, you can essentially get a lot of Visa gift card out of it and then essentially spend it on every which way that you want. And you don't have to specifically stick to this particular category of dining, grocery, home improvement, charities. One more interesting tidbit over here is if you decide to buy something at the grocery, you don't actually have to redeem all of the points for whatever you buy. Let's say you buy a $500 gift card and you only have enough points for let's say $400 or so. You can still buy the $500 gift card and you can apply the rest of your points that you do have onto that and it'll essentially reduce that particular line item that you purchase at the grocery store by that much. So you don't actually have to you know, look at how many points that you have and spend exactly that amount. You can go over a little bit and it would be okay. But realistically, if you're buying a gift card, you can easily tell the cashier you're buying some smaller amount, $400 gift card, and you know it'll work out perfectly. What doesn't work out perfectly is, let's say you went to a restaurant and it's $100, let's say, and you only have $80 worth of points. You might worry that, oh, okay, that's not gonna cancel out. You cannot pay the entire line item of that restaurant bill. But this point system allows you to uh, redeem partially to particular bill. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this little rundown on how to spend your points wisely on Chase Sapphire Preferred. Check out my referral link for this credit card down in the video description below and like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.